Um, just talk, talk about what the city of Jackson was like back in the 40s. You used to work, because you, you, you've got a picture where you were working at the drugstore downtown. Yeah, I worked at the standard drugstore. It was right on the... Uh, right on the corner of uh, Highland and uh, uh, the Main and... Uh, what was that? Lafayette Street, I believe. Lafayette? Yeah. And uh, I think Mr. Driver's got a picture of that old standard drugstore and all. I told him I'd like to have a picture of it. But uh, anyway, cars would park out in front of the store. That's when I was going to school, mm -hmm. high school. And uh, I'd go out and get an order, go back in and make up the order like a lime age and a, ham sandwich or we made all that stuff right there in the store. All the doctors and lawyers around to come there and eat. The place would be full of stools in front of the uh, but uh, we'd go out and hang it on the window you know and when they got through eating they took the horn you go out and get the tray and get the money for it. They would tip you? What was that? What? You might get a nickel tip. What did you make an hour in those days? Oh, I don't have any idea, but not much. Because even after I was grown, I and working on the railroad, I I worked for a dollar and a quarter an hour. This Ray Puckett, a friend of mine, he worked for the fire department, and he was a good carpenter, and he he had a good friend that was an insurance adjuster and they'd have like roof damage he'd do the roof and I'd do the inside I'd I'd do the filling cracks or anything and sand it and paint paint a room or anything like that and he paid me a dollar and a quarter an hour if I wasn't working on a railroad I was doing something I always was downtown Jackson used to have trolley cars, didn't it? That just before I come here, the the rails and everything was still there, and the old streetcar barn it's still down there, uh, where that car lot is uh, at the Wells, you know. Uh -huh. After you pass the uh, the in San St. L Depot down there, the it's on the right historic. Well, on the right. With Kelowna Bakery, it was big, big man. It smelled good. You could, and then going out and where you at the light where you come up on the on the 45 uh -huh. highway there, uh -huh. where you go right straight across that building right there. Okay. That was a streetcar barn, and the streetcars ran all the way out to Hicksville, and they ran all the way up Preston Street, up to Whitehall. And uh, and then, uh, well, Highland was all Highland was brick, and you, the rails were still there. But I come, I was about uh, 13 years old when I come here, and they just discontinued. The, really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you remember Lancaster Park? I remember the name. I don't really remember the part. Uh, uh, I believe the bypass comes over now, though, where it comes. I can't think of it. I don't, I don't know. Was the bypass, what year did they build the South Highland where it come up into, into Jackson? Yeah. I, I, I can't remember offhand just when it wasn't there when you were. When you oh, first no, came there wasn't no bypass, there wasn't anything over there then. Okay. All those streets, that was out in the country. We, all where the bypass is now, that, that way out in the country. And uh, the hospital, it was just a real small land. Jackson Clinic started there, just a small building. There was an old cotton gin that sat down there just off of. Uh, 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 Lambeth, 
where you turn on the, what is that street that goes up by the hospital? Forest. Uh, no. Forest. Is it forest? Yeah. There's a cotton gin there for a year. I played around that cotton gin, uh, and they built a clinic there. And then they finally bought that old gin, did away with it, and made it. That's a parking lot there now for the clinic, you know. Yeah. But uh, that was way out in the country then. The hospital was? Yeah, that's way out the edge of town, you know. And, uh, Where the old Hickory Mall is now, what used to be there? That was a junkyard. That's uh, a fellow by the name of Parker, Deadshot Parker, was an engineer on the railroad. And he didn't have any children but this uh, uh, Parker Wrecker Service. I think it's still out south there. He was his nephew. And when Deadshot passed away, he, he got a lot of, and he got that land out there. And it, it was a, just a junkyard for old cars and stuff. And it's, uh, I think Miss Tigard started that, and her dad, I.B. Tigard, was the president of the railroad at one time. He started out with the Diesburg branch. It run from Jackson to uh, Diesburg. I worked a local out there. A lot of times we had a passenger coach. Uh -huh. And we carried coal and, and feed and everything else. And we'd stop passengers be on the trains. And the brakeman on that, when I'd go down in the morning and go out on it, I'd have to build a fire. It had a stove in the back of it. Uh huh. Build a fire and hang up the markers. Was that called? The, it was originally called the Birmingham and Northwestern, right? Well, that was before my time. Okay. Called it the Diesburg Branch when I went to work. The uh, now that now it ends at a uh, fertilizer plant. Yeah, there's a fertilizer plant out there somewhere. That's the end of it. What was one of the most what was one of the most hairy, dangerous things that ever happened to you? Where you had a close call with something on the railroad? I I guess the closest call I ever had was at Dyer. We had spotted some cars and called it the Monument Spur. Uh, it's where that big grain elevator is now. But uh, a fellow had a little garden there and tomatoes. And evidently had straw around there, around the base of them. Well, right at the edge of the track and then the track dropped off about three feet down to the rail and uh, I jumped off a car and run out there and got me a tomato. I said, this is tell you don't ever take anything you don't belong to you. And when I come back to run to get on the train my feet went out from under me my legs went across the rail and I was just real active. The car wasn't, the wheels wasn't more than six inches from my legs when I jumped and drug my legs off the rail to keep, keep from getting them cut off. Cut my legs off. Wow. I said, I'll never take anything else that don't belong to me. <laughs> <laughs> I think good Lord was talking to me then.